Hey, what's up, guys? It's Donkey Shot for FXRay.com. Welcome to another amazing Photoshop tutorial. Today, we're gonna create a low poly portrait out of this image. Low poly is a term used in 3D computer graphics. Every 3D model is made of polygons. And the less polygons you have, the less detailed the 3D object will be. In this case, we're not going to use 3D software to create a 3D model but we're going to be using Photoshop only to imitate a 3D low poly model. The reason why we chose a frontal portrait is because this image here is made of 610 single polygons. But actually, we just created 305 polygons and then mirrored the left side to the right. That's half the work and we get faster to the result. Let's take a closer look at the polygons. Here, the polygons are triangles with different colors and different sizes. If you look at the eye, for instance, you see a lot of small triangles compared to the cheek. You'll also notice that each side of a triangle matches the side of an adjacent triangle. That is essential for this technique. Another thing that is obvious, but I still want to mention it, the more polygons you have, the more details will be visible. This cat here is made out of 184 polygons and took about 10 minutes. Here's the same cat made out of 819 polygons, which took my intern Amanda a couple of hours, but it's really worth the time. My suggestion is that you start with something less complex than a face, like this bird. Here we have about 200 polygons and it's a lot easier and faster. But since the technique and theory is same on every picture, I'm going straight to the portrait. That's an image of our beautiful model Belle. And first of all, I'm going to duplicate the background layer and name it Copy. Let's zoom in into the eye to get more details. Then select the polygonal lasso tool, which can be found underneath the regular lasso tool. Okay, so the basic idea is to select the triangle with the polygon tool, like this and then to fill the triangle with the average color of the selection in the image, probably some greenish blue color. That's exactly what we're going to do when selecting the blur average filter. Now the triangle is filled with the average color of my selection. Pretty easy, hmm? Let's do it again. Select the triangle with the polygon tool and apply the last filter. Here we go. And again, you can also press Command F for the last filter. Another triangle. Perfect. So once again, we create triangles and fill them with the average color. If we zoom in closer, we realize that the triangles are not adjacent to one another, which is an issue. So you either have to work very, very precise or you're letting Photoshop help you. Go to View, Show, Grid, to activate the grid. Then go to Photoshop's preferences and open guides, grids and slices. Change the grid line unit to pixels and I'm going to change the gap to 10, which works fine for this image. And I also want no subdivision, so I set this one to one. Then I want to reduce the opacity of the grid. That's why I changed the style from lines to dashed lines. And now I see what's behind the grid. And I also changed the color to something less disturbing. Red seems to be working fine here. Okay. Now I have something that helps me to orientate. But to make the lasso snap to those points, you have to go to View and activate Snap and Snap to Grid. When you try to use the lasso tool again, you'll realize that the lasso now wants to get to one of those points. So now you can go to Filter, Average, and then select an adjacent triangle. And another one here. And if we now take a look, you see that there are no empty slots at all. Perfect. While we fixed one problem, there still is another one concerning the edge of the triangle. Something you can see better when I turn off the grid for a sec. Let's zoom in a little bit more. We don't have a clear edge, but a lot of transparent pixels here. 
at some point your triangles start to get transparent edges, like in this image here. You can avoid this by simply unchecking the anti-alias function in the lasso option menu. And now, when I turn back on the grid and create another triangle selection, like here, and maybe another one, now we see that there is no transparency at all. Okay, so I'm glad we fixed another issue. So, we know how to create and match triangles and fill them with the average color, but the thing is that we create those triangles on the main layer. Let's delete the layer and start over. This time I'm going to work differently. First I need the grid, then I select the triangle on the background layer, but this time I press Command J to duplicate the selection into a new layer. Select the layer's content by holding the command key and go to Filter, Blur, Average. So this time we created a polygon on a single layer and that's exactly what we need. And since we're going to create quite a few polygons all with the same procedure, it's a good idea to create an action for that. Create a new set and a new action named Create Polygon on New Layer. Since we're going to apply the action to an already made selection, let me stop the recording for a second, make a random selection, and then continue recording by pressing the circle icon. First, you want to select the background layer, since that is our reference. Then press Command J to duplicate the selection on a new layer and name the layer Polygon. Next, make a selection by holding Command and clicking on the actual layer, then go to Filter, Blur, Average, and finally cancel the selection by pressing Command D. That's it. Stop the recording and double click on the action to open its options. We want to set a shortcut to play the action, F1 for instance, so we don't have to press the play button every time we want to create a polygon. On a Mac, the function keys are used for special features like volume or brightness. You can change these settings in the system preferences on the keyboard and then check the use all of one, of two, etc. keys as standard keys. Back in Photoshop, I can now make a selection and then simply press F1 to play my action. And here we go with another polygon. And as you can see, each polygon is on an individual layer. So now we are all set up and ready to get started. Let's delete these layers here and zoom into the face. With Command R you can activate the ruler and drag a guide right into the middle of Bell's face. As I already mentioned, we're going to do the left side only and then mirror it to the right side. And I'm gonna start with the details like the eye and the eyebrow. Press Command H to show the grid. And I think I probably start with the eyebrow since this area here already looks like a triangle. One, two, and double click to close the selection and then have one to play the action. And a smaller triangle here, F1. And I'm trying to follow the shape of the eyebrow defined by the dark color. And in this case, it's pretty simple to see the triangles Maybe it's a little tricky here. So we have a bigger one and maybe two smaller ones. One here and another here. So the eyebrow looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take care of the eyelid. And I'm going to start with the first triangle here. Set my first point, my second point. Now it's important to understand that I can't set the last point here. That's not how it works. You need to close both triangles. First point here, second here, and now the third by the fold. And here we go. Same here. First two points on the upper triangle, then I close it with the other one. Here I have to go a different way, but I can see the open spot now where I have to close the triangle. One, two and maybe here, one, two, maybe better here, one, two, three, one, two, three, and last time 
over here. And that's the eyelid. And now some fast motion. So that was one of the more detailed parts of this picture. We had a couple of small polygons, especially on the eyeball and iris. And now we're going to go a little bigger. So that's the face. We have some bigger polygons on her forehead and smaller ones on detailed parts like the nose and the mouth. And now we have quite a few layers here, so I'm gonna select them and put them into a group, let's say face. And I continue with the ear, hair and body. Okay, we're almost done. Just put those layers into a new group and all of the groups into another group. Deactivate the background layer and add a solid color. Maybe something bluish. And now we can zoom in and look if we have made any mistakes. So step by step, I'm going to check the polygons. And here we have a one arrow. You can see the blue background shining through. So I'm going to delete the layer and create a new polygon of one. And I put the layer above the color fill. Let's keep on searching. And here's another spot that I'm going to fix. And I think we're good. Now I can duplicate the whole folder and name it right side. Press Command T for transform and change the anchor point to the right middle. Then flip the folder horizontally and you're done. Double click on the color fill to open the layer styles and add a gradient overlay. Radial, reverse with blend mode screen. Adjust the light beam and set the opacity to about 25%. Press OK and adjust the color if necessary. And actually we're done. But there's something I'd want to show you too. Select any polygon and open its layer style. Add a stroke. Here's the polygon, let me zoom in. Change the color to white and the size to two pixels. Okay, right click on the layer and select copy layer style. Activate the filter for pixel layers by clicking on this icon. Then select all layers by pressing Alt Command A right click and paste layer style. So that is one huge advantage of having the polygons on individual layers. Now we have endless possibilities. 
Open any layer style again, deactivate stroke and add gradient overlay. Set the blend mode to soft light and the opacity to about 15%. And once again, copy the layer style and paste it to all polygons. Now we also have a shadowing within the polygons and if you don't like any of that, just right click and clear layer style. That's it actually. I hope you guys enjoyed our tutorial. We are looking forward to seeing your results. My name is Don Quixote. Take care.